I saw him on TV with the cape shooting laser beams. I don't wear a cape. On November 5th. You are about to meet the greatest warriors ever known. Eternals assemble. The Marvel Universe. Let's finish this. Will never be the same. Are you a wizard like Doctor Strange? I'm super normal. There are no wizards. Doctor Strange is a sorcerer. Oh, ah! <laughs> A sorcerer is a wizard without a hat. That feels weird, but I'll allow it. Marvel Studios Eternals, ready PG-13. Welcome back, everyone. This is going to be my new Eternals video. Marvel just dropped a brand new trailer with a bunch of scenes of them talking about Doctor Strange, so I'll explain what's going on and why Doctor Strange seemingly doesn't know about the emergence or this giant celestial that's growing inside planet Earth for the past million years, threatening to destroy everyone and how this is connected to the events of Spider-Man No Way Home and Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness because those are the next two Marvel movies. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. I am doing a giveaway for movie tickets. All you have to do to enter is just be a subscriber and leave all your theories about the movie on the video. But Marvel obviously just released this new trailer where Kit Harington's Black Knight Dane Whitman character just casually mentions Doctor Strange when Cersei is trying to explain her powers in the Eternals backstory to him. This is obviously a scene that's coming right after the big deviant attack where he gets saved and Icarus goes full Superman and he's witnessing their powers for the first time. Like, wait a minute, what the hell just happened? And there were so many people on my last video that asked if Cersei killed all the people on the bus when she turned the bus into flowers. The only person that was on that bus was the driver and that's the person that she picks up and apologizes to. So that's why the person is sitting in the pile of flowers because he was the only person on the bus. So she didn't just kill a whole bunch of humans. The whole thing with Kit Harington's Dane Whitman character knowing who Doctor Strange is, like he mentions him casually in conversation like it's secondhand knowledge. It's all part of the overall Marvel Phase 4 plot they've been telling in the last couple of movies. They do something similar during the Shang-Chi movie. Right at the beginning of Shang-Chi, he and Katie are having drinks with their normal friends like they're just normal people. And during their conversation, totally regular human friends casually mention Thanos, Avengers Infinity War, the snap, and then also the blip during Avengers Endgame, saying that at any moment, half of us could just vanish without a trace, die in an instant. And the way they play the scene is kind of in a comedic way. So the idea is that when Shang-Chi and when the Eternals movie pick up in the timeline of Marvel Phase 4, enough time has gone by since the end of Avengers Endgame and the blip with everyone coming back that the shock has kind of worn off on the general public. As Kit Harington's character demonstrates this, the Avengers characters who fought Thanos and Endgame are all now pop culture icons. Like if you remember Spider-Man Far From Home at the beginning of that movie, high school kids, like casual high school kids are just referencing the blip like it's no big deal on their high school news outlet. And just to clarify, Marvel finally confirmed that the Eternals movie takes place around the same time as Spider-Man No Way Home is happening. So the emergence, for instance, the new celestial growing inside planet Earth is about to hatch and destroy the planet. That's supposed to happen right around the same time J. Jonah Jameson is doxing Spider-Man with the Mysterio video. And just spoiler warning for Venom Let There Be Carnage really quick if you haven't seen that movie. So in the Venom Let There Be Carnage post credit scene, they imply that the timeline of that, like where this post credit scene is happening with Venom being transported into the MCU is happening a little while or around the same time as that Spider-Man Far From Home post credit scene is happening. The scene of him watching the news broadcast of J. Jonah Jameson talking about Tom Holland's Spider-Man is a little bit different from the video that was playing in the Far From Home post credit scene. So it's implied there's a little bit of a time jump, but around that same time. So the whole idea is that Eternals takes place before Spider-Man No Way Home and Doctor Strange's spell to erase everyone's memories. In answering the question now, why didn't Doctor Strange know about a giant celestial that's been growing inside planet Earth for the past eon? Because it seems like it'd be a pretty big deal. Like he keeps this watch list of all the most dangerous things threatening this dimension. Wouldn't the celestial be on that list? The justification that they're going with is because of the way the celestial host, Ershin the Judge, use their cosmic powers, their celestial technology to cloak themselves from detection. That includes being detected by technology like Iron Man's Stark tech, but also magical detection as well. So on one level, the Celestials are some of the most powerful characters in the universe next to cosmic concepts like Eternity, which is the living embodiment of the multiverse. And Eternity created the Celestials. The Celestials then in turn created the Deviants and the Eternals. And even when all the Eternals are working together at their maximum powers, they still could not kill a Celestial. Their best hope is to either convince them not to destroy the planet, like please do not blow up the planet, or try to keep the Celestial inside the planet from waking up, like shh, baby go back to sleep, Celestial go back to sleep, everyone just be quiet, don't wake him up. 
And in that first trailer, you even see some of their active cloaking technology that they use to hide the spaceship. The only characters that would actually know what's going on with the Eternals would be characters who are ancient themselves, like Odin or other Eternals, like the race of the other Eternals that Thanos comes from on Titan. Thanos would know all about the Eternals, but obviously he doesn't care about that. He's just there for the Infinity Stones. And secondly, Doctor Strange has not been looking for any secret Celestials growing inside the Earth. Because the Celestial host planted this seed for the new Celestial in Earth millions of years ago, and it slowly feeds on the life that evolves on Earth over millions of years, just helping it grow, it happened so gradually, the process was so slow, that it never raised any red flags, and once Earth's technology got to the point where they could detect it if they tried, nobody was ever looking for something like that with that particular energy signature. Doctor Strange is powerful enough that if he did learn that there was a Celestial hiding on planet Earth somewhere inside the planet, he could break through the Celestial's technology, their cloaking device, and find where it was. It's just that it's been so stealth this whole time, up to the snaps and the blip, Doctor Strange has been so busy with other major universe-ending threats like Thanos and the Infinity Gauntlet that they never really thought to look for any Celestials on Earth. And even though the other Eternals seem like they're trying to stay off the radar, Kumail Nanjiani said that Kingo, for instance, because he's trying to be this big celebrity, this Bollywood star, he has interacted with other Marvel characters, other Avengers characters, but not the ones that would be able to detect that he was an Eternal. That's why they try to avoid contact with people like Doctor Strange, because he'd be able to immediately tell who they were. But because Spider-Man No Way Home, now confirmed, takes place after the Eternals movie, and Doctor Strange seems totally chill in the trailer to make as many cold weather puns as possible inside the Sanctum with all these snow drifts everywhere, it's pretty clear that the Eternals are successful in stopping this new Celestial from destroying the planet, either stopping it from waking up or just finding a way to just negate the threat. So the next big question now is going forward in Marvel Phase 4, like during Spider-Man No Way Home, during Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness, Thor Love and Thunder, all the other upcoming movies, do all the Avengers characters go running around now in their movies having adventures and we just have this giant celestial napping inside the Earth forever? Like do the Avengers just go around stepping lightly because the celestial is still hiding inside the planet, like a giant ticking time bomb? Early theory too. They'll use that dormant celestial inside the planet in the future movies as the catalyst for some larger Avengers story, like Avengers 5 or Avengers 6 or a Fantastic Four Galactus story. There are a lot of you that have also asked if I think that the celestial that's growing inside planet Earth is going to be Galactus. And the reason why I don't think that's going to happen is because they say so much of the movie is faithful to the classic Jack Kirby comics. I think the celestial that's growing inside the planet will be one of the celestials from the Eternals comics. But for instance, Galactus is known as the Devourer. He devours cosmic energy contained inside planets around the universe. He doesn't consume planets themselves, he just consumes cosmic energy from the planets. And if there's a huge celestial that's inside planet Earth now just chilling out, that's kind of like the Marvel Fantastic Four equivalent of a giant space hot pocket. Pizza time. If Galactus were really hungry and looking for a snack, Earth would now be so rich with cosmic energy from this new celestial that it would be the easiest slam dunk to use that as the concept for the reason Galactus eventually targets Earth in some future movie. I don't think we're actually going to see Galactus in the MCU as a big character metaphorically and literally until well after that first new Fantastic Four movie. But you can see how they're laying all these seeds in this track work to set up bigger characters and cosmic level threats heading into Marvel Phase 5, heading into Avengers 5, other Avengers movies. And this doesn't even get into the whole concept of mutants in the MCU and how they'll explain the X gene mutation. I've already done a few videos about how the Eternals movie is setting up larger mutants in the MCU, so I'll add a link for that down in the description and at the end of this. But that's something that's sort of in the background, like mutants aren't a really big part of the Eternals movie. The Eternals movie is mostly meant to introduce these characters and do some larger cosmic storytelling, tell you the true origin of the Celestials, the origin of the MCU. But post all your theories in the comments below, what's going to happen to this giant Celestial that's going to be sleeping inside planet Earth for the rest of the Marvel Phase 4 movies into Marvel Phase 5? I'm supposed to see the Eternals movie sometime really soon, I think I can post my movie review Sunday if I'm able to see it in time. My full breakdown and easter eggs video post credit scene videos won't post till after the movie comes out everywhere in a couple weeks, so make sure to watch the movie when you do have the chance. There'll be lots more Spider-Man No Way Home videos coming soon, there should be a new Spider-Man trailer next week, so of course I'll do a video for that as soon as they release it, make sure you have alerts enabled for my channel so you don't miss anything. Everyone click here to learn how the Eternals movie is setting up X-Men in the MCU, and click here to learn about the new Hulk movie that Marvel is making now.
Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.